In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God his Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. We welcome you here this morning. We welcome all of those who are watching us all over the world. And we join together in celebrating the season of Lent, a time for reconciliation, a time for taking on a challenge, a time for charity and love in our midst. With that in mind, we seek the forgiveness that only God can give. Please join me. God of mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Lord God, we are reminded this day of human nature. May the best that is within each one of us contribute to the good that we do in our community, in our parish, and in our world. May we know that you give us great gifts. May we use them wisely in the season of Lent to rise to the occasion of Easter, the Paschal mystery fulfilled in the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, for he is Lord of our lives forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods beside me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not have leave unpunished the ones who take his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the word of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precept of the Lord are right rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from a comb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand sign and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness of, to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, 
and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them out of the temple area with the sheep and the oxen, and then spilled the coins of the money changers, overturning their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you give us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. But the Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, the disciples remembered what he had said. They came to believe the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was a little kid, just 12 or 13 years ago, I uh, would go into St. Teresa's church. And in those days, um, something that most churches did and I'm sure you remember this, was you had to contribute something on the way in for seat money. How many remember that? Seat money, right? And it was some small amount. And this this church did it too for a number of years. But I remember vividly, it was 25 cents. And so when you went in, the ushers had spent the whole morning putting little stacks of three quarters on a card table. And they were all there dozens if not hundreds of them so someone would give them a dollar and they would get back three quarters but to me as a kid who was 10 years old my eyesight was level with that card table and every time this gospel would come around I had this urge to overturn those card tables I would just look at it and say something is wrong with this and it was and I always wondered what would have happened on my road to priesthood if I had done that who knows Be that as it may, I think that the most important um, words in this particular gospel um, come at the end, where uh, Jesus says he did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it all too well. And part of our journey in Lent is to come to terms with our own human nature, which in some ways, uh, 80% of the time is pretty good. But then there's that 20% or 10 or 15. If you're lucky, it's only five or less. But there are those other aspects of human nature which we have to get in touch with, and we have to own them. Because if we don't own them, they will own you. And you know what they are. They are the jealousies and the envies and the the hatreds um, and the anger and all the rest of those things that Jesus was talking about here. Because he knew they were after him. He knew that they disliked him intensely, and he was viewed as their competition, and he was all too aware that the end would not be far off. And that's why he tells them, destroy this temple, I will raise it up in three days. As Jesus came to a greater awareness of his own personal journey, he became also aware of what a threat it was to the establishment of the day. So when he talks about human nature, he, he understands it, and he is trying to break through it to those who will listen. And many, many, many did. Many did not. 
He wanted to really let people know that the power of God is before you in, in my person, in my revelation. And St. Paul, in talking to the Corinthians, gets immediately to the core of what that is. And he says, brothers and sisters, some people are looking for signs and looking for all sorts of things, but to those who are called, which is every single one of us in this church, to those who are called, the power of God and the wisdom of God is Christ, revealed in someone like you and I. The power of God and the wisdom of God is accessible to us. And that's important because we need that in our lives. We need the power of God to confront the world when human nature is not very nice or we get dragged down with it. We need the wisdom of God to try to figure the world out when we don't understand it sometimes, when people want to get angry with God, when people get angry at the world, when people don't understand and they retreat into bitterness. We need the power of God. We need the wisdom of God to fight our way through that. And without that, we can succumb to all the worst things that human nature can be all about, that Jesus was talking about. He understood human nature all too well, and so do you and I. It's, it's very often, as I've always said, our own dragons that we have to hold in check. And we have to name them, and we have to know them, and know that they cannot and will not dominate our lives, cannot have that happen. We keep them shut up, and we visit them every now and then, and we name them, and then we close the door again because we don't want them to get out. But some people, they do get out. And when they do, it really is, it really is terrible because it, it, can, it can wreck families. It can destroy marriages. It can ruin relationships uh, any, any number of different ways if, if we do not check that part of human nature. That, that can cause us such pain. And it's very easy to see what it is because there it is, the commandments, right there in front of you. It's, it's all there. Um, don't kill, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't bear false witness. Um, all, it's, it's all listed. And this is thousands of years old. And, and this is what um, is delivered to them by Moses himself. And that's why they have stood the test of time. Moses is looking at these people wandering in the desert, trying to find the promised land. And at times, those demons got out, and they would yell at him, why did we leave Egypt? Why are we wandering in the desert? Why did you take us away? At least we had food to eat. We had water to drink. Now we're in the middle of nowhere, and it's all your fault. Moses had to put up with that for a long, long time. And so when he finally came down the mountain and gave them these, he must have looked at them with great love and said, don't give in. Don't give in to the worst aspects of human nature. We're on a journey. We will get there, but you have to remain strong in your relationship with Almighty God so we can get to where we need to get to without giving in to the anger that you feel. And so he lets them know this is, this is what God not only expects of you, but this is what you can live up to because you have great strength within you. Moses had to always be raising up those people. And Paul is doing the same thing here. And you and I participate in this when we receive communion. When you come down that aisle and we receive communion, the body of Christ, so be it. That is the, the, the sacrificial connection to Christ himself. That is the connection to Christ when we receive the Eucharist. That is when we reinforce what is right here. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. And that's just a part of what you get when you receive the Eucharist. It's what you get when you listen to the gospel. We don't come in here, as I've said many times, because we can go home and say, I went to church and I got communion. No, there's much more going on. It is a level of of wisdom and power that is, is communicated. Hence, we believe that that is the true presence of our Lord that we receive. And it's so very, very important. It's the reason why we come to church. And then finally, my friends, we get, we get to the psalm, which 
is so comforting. And some psalms really verge on being poetry. They really all are in some ways. There's some of them that are psalms of lament, and some are psalms of praise. This is kind of in between. And when I was reading this during the week, <laughs> it, it was, I kind of wanted to kind of go out and sit on the deck and just read it, even if it was cold out there, because it was so comforting to read. When it says, the law of the Lord refreshes my soul. It gives wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord make your heart rejoice. They enlighten the eye. They're all just. They are sweeter than syrup or honey from the comb. It's a beautiful language that's here, reminding us that to, to, be, to be a child of God is not to be a burden. It is rather to refresh the soul and make us strong in the face of what the world can sometimes throw at us, to make us strong in the face of that and not to give in. This, the world is still filled with so much so much hatred and jealousy, and, and so much of it is sadly perpetrated in and among, in and among religious groups. And we, we see that all over the world. I give the Holy Father great credit for journeying into a very dangerous place and trying to promote peace and goodwill. It was a, an amazing trip that he undertook, one in that in previous times, popes were refused entrance and told not to come. And finally, it did happen because the Holy Father understands the wisdom and the power of God. And all he wants to do is simply share that with his brothers from whatever faith. It doesn't matter. So these, th there's great wisdom here for the season of Lent. And again, there is, there is Christ who is being confronted by hateful people, by people who would like to see him dead, by people who want him to go away. And yet, he perseveres in the face of it all because he knows that the revelation of the power and the wisdom of God is more important than his very life. And he's willing to give up his life so that other people will know that. And we sitting here today, 2,000 years, years later, are the direct recipients of his perseverance in the face of death and his unwillingness to give up and his desire to let us all know that we are all children of God he persevered to the very end so you and I could sit here today in this church. Because if we don't draw a direct line between our being here in this church and what was done then, then all this is is getting together on a Sunday morning for a nice time. And I know and believe that it is much more than that. It is in direct connection to the events that are revealed in these sacred scriptures this morning. So know, my friends, that the wisdom and the power of God are yours in abundance because you are here and you will receive the Eucharist, what will you do then? What will any of us do with the power and wisdom that is ours? Lent is a good time to find out. Take on a challenge. Seek God's forgiveness. Grow as a child of God in the power and wisdom that only Christ can give. my feeling exactly. <laughs> Please rise. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We place our prayers and petitions before Almighty God. We remember the needs of our parish, our community, and our world. The responses hear us that elect catechums and candidates learn to love God's law. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear us. us. That the members of this assembly deepen their faith through service to the poor. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear us. us. For those who generously share their time, talent, and treasure, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear us. For the homebound, for those in rehabilitation, and for those in hospice care, Lord, in your mercy, hear hear us. us. For those who need our prayers, and all those who have asked us to pray for them, and all whose names appear on the sick list in our parish bulletin, may God fill their lives with healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear us. us. For all who have died to rise with Christ in eternal light, especially Hermanina Fernandez, Debbie Pernice, Nicholas Romania, Eleanor Loudney, who this Mass is offered. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. And we stand in a moment of silent reflection for our brothers and sisters still suffering from COVID here and around the world, for those who grieve the loss of those they love, and for first responders who watch over us everywhere. Father, we place these petitions and prayers before you. Strengthen us in heart, mind, and in soul that we may continue to build your kingdom on earth through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our lives and our sacrifice of bread and wine, that all these gifts may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive one another through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, help us to imitate you and your kindness to us. We glorify you there with countless angels and saints in one great voice of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the font of holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to a fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, clergy, religious, the entire people your Son has gained for you. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, praising and glorifying you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that with the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accord with your will, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold him, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
The announcements and milestones for this Sunday are the following. We thank you for all that contributed to last week's uh, WIND fundraiser sponsored by Social Justice. Details are in the bulletin as to how successful the event was. It was uh, tremendous. The Lenten Soup campaign is in full swing. Please consider our less fortunate in the sister parish in Ecuador. Details are available in the bulletin. Happiest of birthdays to our dear friend and parishioner, Helen Kueck. Um, that's Helen. Hope you have a great year. Please take a rice bowl home with you at the uh, door if you would like to. That's a, a decades old um, way to contribute to the poor in Lent um, that been doing it since I know I was a, just a little kid. Uh, March is upon us and St. Patrick's Day is 10 days away. Please feel free to wear some green to Mass next weekend, March 13th and 14th. Happy 20th birthday, 25th birthday to Taylor Donafrio, wishing her much happiness in the year to come. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Teresa Gabrielle. She is a lector and an active member of our parish. Her family on the loss of her mother, Georgette. Please pray uh, for the family. March 7th is, I just read these, I don't write them. Today, March 7th is uh, National Alexander Graham Bell Day. Uh, we remember this Scottish-born scientist, inventor, and engineer. He invented many things, but is most fondly remembered for inventing the telephone. Please pray for the Fernandez family. Dr. Robert Fernandez's mother, Herminia Fernandez, passed away this week. We wish her to rest in peace. She was always here at uh, Mass at this parish, uh, and they have been parishioners for many years. Happy first birthday to Luciano Tarmus Parla Greco. We hope he has a wonderful birthday. I baptized that little kid a year ago. It's hard to believe. We're going uh, from a one-year-old to a 95-year-old. Happy 95th birthday um, to Elizabeth uh, Mataliano, who will turn 95 um, tomorrow, or today rather. May God bless you. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the family of Debbie Pernice. Debbie died on Tuesday. She fought a long and hard battle since she was diagnosed with cancer more than 40 years ago. She leaves behind a loving family. Please keep that family in your prayers. See the bulletin for information regarding the Gold Anniversary Mass to be held Sunday, April 25th, 2021. I assume that's down at the cathedral. We wish a happy fifth birthday to our buddy Owen Rogers, who is watching from sunny Miami, Florida. Owen is the grandson of Peggy and Richard Vahonsky, who are also watching from Delaware. Hi. Owen was christened here at OLC by me. God bless Owen and the whole Vahansky family. They're a great crew, and we do miss them very much. We want to send prayers and best wishes to Bill Jimenez for a speedy recovery. Bill is um, in the hospital, um, and he's uh, suffering from COVID-related illness. Uh, he and uh, his wife are always here. He's a former student of mine, and I wish him a full recovery. We thank you uh, for thank you letters from our, we receive thank you letters from Our Lady of Victory's Church, Catholic Family Services for the good work that we have done for them. Uh, the bulletin contains some of those thank yous. We have um, a, a couple of birthdays we remember. Today we remember dear friend and parishioner who have celebrated his 90th birthday today, and that is Jim Carlin. Um, Jim was a founding parishioner um, his wife, Mary Lou, is still among us, and uh, a great family, a very big family. Um, Jim was a personal friend, and everybody, I think, who has been here for any length of time knows him. Uh, when I needed someone to go to Ecuador, Jim decided to go with me. When I needed to go out for discovering stewardship in Kansas, first thing he did was buy a ticket. Um, he was always supportive of me personally, of this parish, uh, and uh, a proud Irishman and he is missed by every single one of us. And I know he's resting in peace, and I know his family misses him a lot. And happy birthday to Phil King, our drummer. Happy birthday, Phil. God bless. <laughs> and um, once again, please invite uh, folks to come back to church. I get asked all the time about what is our capacity and could we have more people? Well, we could have them uh, if they would just come back and we have to ask them to come back. So please do that. We have, as you can see, even with the tape up, we have plenty of room for more people. But again, we, we, they need to know it's, everything's fine. And I think, um, how many here have been vaccinated so far? We're, we're getting there, that's pretty good. So um, 
let everybody know that uh, they're welcome here. Let us stand and pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Celebration is ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other.